Namaste and good morning, everyone. Let's start. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Parbrahma, Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha, Om Bhu Bhuvaswaha, Tatsa Vitra Vare Neyam, Bhargo Deva Sedhi Mahi, Diyo Yonaha Prachodayat, Asto ma sadgamya, tamso ma jyotir gamya, mrityor ma amritam gamya. Om sehna vavutu, sehna vunatu, sehviryam karuvavai, tejasvi navadhitamastu, ma vidveshavai. Om shanti 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 om. According to the Vedic philosophy, Everything in the universe, including the mind, has evolved from Prakriti, the nature. Okay. The Prakriti is eternal and all pervading. Prakriti is the cause of our manifest world. Itself unborn, it is the mother of the entire universe called Mother Nature. And Prakriti has three forces Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. Prakriti, in its unmanifest form, these forces, the intrinsic forces, remain in perfect balance. So in unmanifest form, there's no disturbance. But when this balance gets disturbed, Prakriti becomes manifest. So from avyakta to vyakta. And everything in the manifest world consists of sattva, rajas, and tamas in varying degrees. We have learned from other scriptures uh, that sattva is the force characterized by light, illumination, upward movement, clarity, warmth, inspiration. So that's called sattva. And rajas is the force of activity, movement, instability, agitation, pulsation, all of those characteristics of the Rajasik nature. And tamas is the force of darkness, heaviness, inertia, downward movement, confusion, sloth, dullness, and even lack of enthusiasm. Sattva and Tamas appear to be opposites while the Rajas is the force of activity in between. As long as the Sattva, Rajas and Tamas are in equilibrium, this basic principle of vibration remains still. And that's what that unmanifest form is. But once this equilibrium is disturbed, the objective world emerges in all its diversity. That's what we call pairs of opposites. Because this Prakriti is the mother of the mind, so the consists of these three forces intrinsic to Prakriti. If these forces reach a perfect state of equilibrium, the mind will no longer exist as such, but will merge in the Prakriti. This is what we have to remember. That's why stillness and the purity of the mind is so important. The interplay of these three forces causes the mind to continually shift from one state to another. 
which is why it never functions in a perfectly balanced manner. Either it's distracted or stupefied, disturbed, sometimes one-pointed or well-controlled. We all know that a well-controlled mind emerges when sattva is the dominant force. And both rajas and tamas are minimal at that time. They are there, but they are minimal. When rajas dominates the mind, we fall into the distracted state. So whenever we have a scattered mind, that means Rajsikta is predominating. So the mind usually remains in one or more of the first three states, distracted, stupefied, or disturbed. Only occasionally, with the practice, it becomes one-pointed, and rarely, if ever, well-controlled. And I'm talking about average human mind. Because our thoughts, speech, and actions are either confused, organized, or peaceful, depending upon our mental state, these mental states play a significant role in the formation of our karmas. Because we are all in a karma yoni as human beings. So that's why, in order to control the karmas, or take the karmas to the right direction, we got to make sure that these forces we understand and we have it in control. Actions performed under the influence of a confused mind will be accompanied by sanskars, subtle impressions. And those impressions will be of confusion. And their results will as well be confused too. A confused mind can causes us to create a multitude of weak karmas. And effect of those karmas are stored in our unconscious mind in a very disorganized way. It's almost like a throwing everything into our basement and don't even know where what is. The more unstable the mind and the more sensory objects it contacts, the more sanskars are created and stored. It is often assumed that loss of equilibrium at the level of our biochemistry, in other words, external circumstances cause our adrenaline levels to rise. And that leads us to become agitated. Yet some people do not experience an adrenaline rush in the same situation that disturb others. It's not the external situation, nor the adrenaline that disturbs our equilibrium, but the interplay of the sattva, rajas, and tamas, and dominance of one over the other. People dominated by sattvic energy will stay composed. Even in those situations, those dominated by rajsic energy are, are agitated. And those dominated by tamsic energy are depressed. Same situation. If you want to make sure that our mind function in a balanced way, we must first increase the level of sattva and let the rajas and the tamas become subordinate. Under the influence of sattvic energy, we can think clearly, make the right decisions, and summon our will and determination. And that's how we keep on increasing the positive karmas and prevent negative ones from forming. But in order to do this, we got to create the environment which attracts the sattvic energies from every direction and repels 
Rajsik and Tamsik ones. To do this, we have to be vigilant. In all areas of our life, and I should add all the time also, how we sleep, what we eat, what we read, how we exercise, and how we interact with others. In other words, we have to bring sattvic qualities to all our actions, physical, verbal, and mental. So through the body, through the speech, and through the thoughts also. If we pay attention to these and other areas of our life with a view to increasing our sattvic energies, we can definitely make our mind focused, balanced, sharp, and penetrating. A balanced sattvic mind then has the capacity to withstand the internal turmoil caused by the Rajsik and Tamsik effects of our dormant and active karmas. Because we don't know in the storehouse what kind of a karmas are there. We have control only right now, in this moment. A sattvic mind, always remember, is free from attachment. Anger. Worldly desires, hatred, jealousy, greed, and arrogance. Because the mind is more subtle than the body and senses, a sattvic mind will send waves of sattvic energy in the body and senses. And the effect of that is that they will lose the Rajsik and Tamsik cravings. Even the primitive urges of hunger, sleep, sex, and self-preservation will be sattvic, causing little turmoil in our life. And what is more, increasing our sattvic energy will significantly reduce our confusion. We'll know what this life is all about. In fact, we'll even know that where we came from. What are we doing? And what kind of steps we are leaving behind? Sage Patanjali and Rishi Vyas. They tell us that a confused mind is not fit to follow the path of yoga. Because they are yoga teachers, yoga gurus. They say that we should embrace the spiritual disciplines of love, compassion, forgiveness, and non-attachment. And learn to use the power of will and compassion. Which is called Sankalap Shakti. Let's look at, uh, according to the scriptures, uh, how we can uh, do all this. First of all, we have to remember that we can summon our power of will and determination to make a decision and act on that decision. Personally, we have to have that power. Remember that we have that power inside us because it is entirely up to us to create potential karmas that are due to our growth. If we decide to make an effort to perform sattvic actions, such actions and will will engender sattvic fruits. And with the help of those sattvic fruits, we will purify our mind and minimize confusion. 
remember there's nothing in our destiny that we ourselves did not create we got to take this responsibility the results of actions we performed long ago have manifested as our current destiny where we were born the parents we had the siblings we had other relatives the body we are in that is part of this destiny just as the actions we are performing today will manifest as our future destiny we must never forget that as humans we have a great degree of a freedom of choice with the effort we can focus our scattered mind momentarily and make a decision to evolve ourselves and perform wholesome actions we may not always succeed but we can keep trying at least that much we can do we can commit ourselves to such a course of action and staying with it for a prolonged period that is called a spiritual practice sadhana so make commitment and stick with it it is the practice that makes us perfect so by undertaking positive actions we create positive potential karmas according to yoga we can incorporate three spiritual practices into our lives which will do much to loosen the grip of our negative karmas number 1 is cultivating focus in sanskrit it's called bhavana focus second is exercising control over our senses that is called pratyahar in rishi patanjali's language and the third is strengthening our power of will and determination which is called sankalp shakti so dharna pratyahar and sankalp shakti this is what i want to talk about today forming a habit of staying focused will prevent us from involving ourselves into useless actions so it's not only dharna when we sit down and getting ready to do dhyan all day long we got to make sure that we are focused on the right actions is this i want to do or am i getting unnecessarily involved and making my life more confusing children we are often more interested in knowing what others are doing than in doing what we need to do this leads us to compare ourselves with others and outcome of that is either we feel inferior or superior and those complexes get created and by creating that kind of a complex we create an environment in which hatred jealousy greed competitiveness perish such feelings pollute our mind and force us to involve ourselves in unnecessary actions by performing unnecessary actions we get unnecessary karmas which perpetuate our confusion and complication of our life so that's why these yogi rishis they tell us focus make sure what you are doing you are supposed to do this is your duty to do do not get unnecessary involved in your life mud because there's always if you do any karma like that there will be a sanskar 
and that's as high, you'll have to clean it. So live a life with a full discipline. So that's why this first one, cultivating focus is very important. From morning till night, we do countless karmas. Do it with a complete focus. And the second practice I wanted to talk about is pratyahar. Sense withdrawal. Because we know that mind cannot execute its plans without the help of the senses. A sattvic mind employs them to complete its chosen tasks. When tamas is dominated, the mind becomes careless and begins to depend upon senses. The senses take advantages of this dependency. Their cravings grow into urges and the urges draw the mind toward pleasurable objects. Eventually the mind becomes servant to senses and we perform our actions under the influence of these sensory urges, creating potential karmas contaminated by cravings and confusion. So the senses are many and they are very powerful. Senses of taste, touch, smell, sight and hearing compel the mind to run from one object to another. Freeing ourselves requires the disciplining of the senses. The scriptures tell us that discipline which has provision for training and taming the senses alone qualifies as yoga practice. If you are doing certain kind of a practice and you are not working on your senses, that's not a yogic practice. This yogic practice alone enables an aspirant to break the cycle of birth and death. That's important, Pratyaharis. Do not be a slave to the senses, become the master of the senses. In other words, to escape the mind from this endless cycle, we must work with our senses. We must choose one and concentrate on bringing it under control. So we can do it one at a time also. The yogi guru says, begin by working with the tongue. The abode of two senses, taste and speech. Because the influence of taste supersedes all other urges and motivates many of our actions. Even though taste is generally associated with the food, but if you look deeply, anything we take in has a taste. The taste buds on our tongue experience pleasure related to food. But the experience corresponding to the other sense organs are ultimately savored by the mind. We watch something, we hear something, ultimately mind is savoring it. And those experiences are expressed through our tongue in the form of the speech then. We watch a movie, we are tasting it through our eyes and the ears, then from our tongue we tell others, oh, what a wonderful movie. Words rolling off our tongue are the manifestation of our thoughts, which themselves are generated in response to sensory perceptions and feelings. 
So we cannot think without words, and words are expressed out through. So if a person can discipline the senses by disciplining the tongue, both our diet and our speech, that will be enormous. When these are regulated properly, our actions are better organized and our life becomes less complicated. A simple life provides two opportunities for the mind to be confused and stirred. That's why I always remember my Guruji's simple saying, Sadhgi me sukh, dikhave me dukh. And we all want sukh, but sadhgi me sukh, simply sit. With a more organized and peaceful mind, we can perform actions that create positive karmas. So this was a, a little light on the pratyahar. Let's look at uh, the third. Uh, and to me, I think it's very important uh, part of the discipline. Because in order to undertake uh, and to overcome the confusion of our mind, we got to build our Sankalap Shakti. The power of will and determination. Ordinarily, we surrender ourselves to the force of karma because we are not aware of the power of the mind. But according to Gyan Yoga, karmas are created, sustained, and executed by the magical power of mind. In other words, the mind is the cause of both bondage and liberation. Maneva manushya nam karnam band moksha. So the key to unlocking the mind's liberating power is sankalap shakti. The failure to use this power of will and determination is the source of misery. As humans, we have the capacity to overcome our self-created karmic misery. For one fold our shakti to its fullness. According to Sage Vyasa, the mind is imbued with seven such intrinsic powers. Let me give you the names of these seven powers of mind. One is called the Shakti. The power to be and the power to become. The fundamental force to accomplish any task. That is a Shakti of the mind. Then the second is a Cheshtha. Purposeful movement which gives momentum. Cheshtha. It is called Jivan. Jivan is the capacity to contain the life life force and keep an organism alive gives life to all the stored contents G1 the next is Parinam the capacity to keep changing from one state to another one mood to another then comes Nirodh the capacity to stop shifting from one state to another. And sixth is called sanskar. The capacity to store the subtle impressions of an action or any information the mind gathers. So shakti, cheshtha, jivan, parinam, nirodh, sanskar. <clears throat> and the seventh one is dharam. 
the power that naturally inclines the mind toward freedom and inner fulfillment. So mind has all these powers. Huh? But due to a lack of spiritual training, we usually experience only the function of the sixth force, sanskar. Regardless of the state of our mind, how confused and clear it is, how disturbed or composed, how dull or vibrant, inspired or depressed, we can meet the challenge of any problem, provided we have access to these intrinsic forces. And sadhana, the spiritual practice, the training provides this access. In fact, success in any endeavor, it could be spiritual or it could be worldly, comes from cultivating the conviction that we have the power to accomplish anything. That is a single shakti that I will do it, I can do it. That's why sometimes some students tell me that no, it's so difficult. I say, don't do that, don't even say that. Because you are accepting the defeat even before you are trying to do it. Sankalap Shakti means you can do it. Having faith in yourself. Due to the lack of spiritual awareness, however, most of us experience only the functioning of sanskars through which the mind continually stores the impressions of our actions. The storage space, which is called the chit also, is expanded in the process throughout continuous and countless lives, we just kept enlarging that storage space. It's almost like if we don't have enough room in our basement, we build another storage space or we rent a storage place. Keep on putting it there. And this is what we have done with our own chit also. Our decision-making faculty is heavily influenced by the powerful, subtle impressions stored there, the sanskars. That is why even though we know it is right, at a conscious level, we are not motivated to do it because of that burden which we are carrying. And that's also why we fail to stop doing that which we know is harmful. That to pay attention. But if we are following this path, if we are concentrating on our life, we'll be able to follow through. Our personality traits in turn evolve along the pattern established by the contents of our storage or the deeper layers of our mind. And that's how our tastes also get developed, our interests and our choices also. Because we are not conscious of it, it's just coming from our unconscious mind. To discover why this is so and to continue adding to knowledge of how to attain freedom from the wheel of karma we must embark on a study of this deeper layers of our mind. We need to know what did I store there? We may not know when did we store it, but it is our storage. We got to have a relationship, not only with the conscious mind, we got to have a relationship with our unconscious mind also, or a subconscious mind also. And that's why we are supposed to do the dhyan every day. Because that is the time we are digging deeper into 
those layers of our mind. And over there also not to get involved further. Go in there to clean it. Those impressions are there. At random we have put in the impressions there. So now consciously we have to go in there and dig it out and throw it out if it's no use to us. Sure, there are some sanskars which are useful to us. Sanskar of the sadhana. Sanskar of staying sattvic. Sanskar of staying compassionate, loving, helping. Those sanskars we need to keep. But then there are a lot of other sanskars which are useless. We are the one who put it there. It's almost like again going into your storage house, sorting it out, what is useful and what is not to you. And discarding that is very important. So this is what the sadhana is all about. And this nobody else can do it for us. And this is not just a one day or one weekend or one retreat. This is the entire lifetime sadhana. Make sure what you are doing, do it with the full concentration. Like horses, keep them tamed. Do not let them go where they don't need to go. They should be pure also, but they should be in our control also. See, just like in Mahabharat, we are reading those horses of which were on the chariot of Arjun and Lord Krishna. They were white in color. Pure. And then we are learning that they were Gandharva horses. They could understand what was going on in Lord Krishna's mind. Our senses should be that well attained. They should not see something which is not conducive to our growth. They should not hear anything which is not conducive for our growth. And then uh, make sure that you have this uh, sankalap shakti, that willpower, the determination that you can do it. You must do it. Because even if uh, one person has done it, that means we can do it too. It's doable. We should never accept the defeat before we even start. We must do it. So let's stop it here with the mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamutachate Purnasya Purnamai Purnamev Sheshate Om Shanti 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 Om